From the revolutionary development of the groundbreaking Mirage Digital Sampler to the sampling, sequencing, and performance features found in the EPS Sampling Workstation, Insonic has been at the forefront of sampling technology. The EPS 16 Plus brought us into the 90s with improved fidelity and onboard effects processing, another first for a sampler. And now, with the new ASR10 Advanced Sampling Recorder, Insonic brings another innovation to the world of sampling. R10 is a phenomenal new stereo sampling workstation with 24-bit dynamic effects processing and 50 programmable effects algorithms. The ASR10 is based around a new custom oscillator chip with 31 notes of polyphony, hardware envelopes, and the ability to access up to 16 megabytes of memory. For your compositional needs, the ASR10 has an onboard 16-track sequencer with a host of professional features. And only in Sonic offers exclusive features like pass select buttons and the expressive control of the poly key pressure keyboard. The ASR-10 Advanced Sampling Recorder could only come from the innovators in sampling in Sonic! Hi, I'm Roy Elkins, Director of Training at Insonic. Today we're going to take you step by step through the ASR-10 Advanced Sampling Recorder. This video is designed to give you a big head start in using the ASR-10. It's easy to follow and will take about an hour or so to complete. And when we're finished, we're going to test your newfound knowledge. Now, we're going to take you through this video in three sections. Live and studio performance, sampling and sound editing, and sequencing operations. You will need the following materials to complete this tutorial. An ASR-10, an ASR-10 operating system disk, a microphone, a blank, unformatted, three and a half inch floppy disk, an audio monitoring system, keyboard amp, mixer, or headphones. If you're not using headphones, it's a good idea to make sure that your audio system is turned off or down when making connections to avoid damaging speakers or components. Connect the power cable to a grounded AC line outlet. Connect the main outs of the ASR-10 to the line level inputs of a mixer, instrument amplifier, stereo, or any other sound system using quarter inch audio cables. Using the panning controls on your mixer, pan one channel left and one channel right. For listening through headphones, plug the headphones into the rear panel jack marked phones. If you would like more information regarding your connections, refer to page 2 of the tutorial manual. Locate the volume slider on the left hand side of the front panel and move it all the way up. As with any digital musical instrument, the ASR-10 will give best results if you keep the volume slider in the full up position. Use the volume control on your mixer or amp to adjust its level. Turn the power switch, located on the rear panel, to the on position. The display will briefly read, in Sonic ASR-10. Then, we'll switch to prompting, please insert disc. Now it's safe to turn your audio system on. Find the disc labeled in Sonic ASR-10 operating system. Insert this disc into the drive with the disc label facing upwards. The display will read loading system, then tuning keyboard hands off. The ASR-10 needs this brief time to calibrate its poly key keyboard. Do not play the keyboard during this time. Finally, the display will show keyboard tuned, followed by File 1, Tutorial.
Memorial Bank. Let's review the front panel. On the left hand side of the front panel, locate the three buttons labeled Load, Command, and Edit. Officially, these are called the Mode buttons. An easy analogy is to refer to them as the books. At all times, you'll be in one of these three books. To the right of the books, locate a group of 14 buttons labeled Instrument, Sequence Song, System MIDI, Effects, Envelope 1, Envelope 2, Pitch, Track, and so on. These could be referred to as the chapters of our books. And to the right of the chapters, locate the four arrows. Pressing the right arrow will scroll you through the pages of each chapter. For example, press the Edit Book, the System MIDI chapter. Note that the display will always tell you what chapter and what book you're in. Pressing the right arrow will scroll you through the different pages of each chapter. Press the right arrow until the display reads Master Tune. To change values on the display, use the up and down arrow or the data slider as shown here. Now let's review what we'll cover in section one. Section one will include loading, selecting, and playing instruments and banks, using the front panel controllers such as the mod wheel, the pitch wheel, and the patch select buttons. The poly key pressure keyboard will also be covered. Other topics in section one include stacking instruments, and using the internal effects with an external source. In this first exercise, we're going to load, select, and play an instrument. Make sure that your operating system disk is in the disk drive. Press the load button. Press the instrument button. Pressing the up arrow will allow you to scroll through all of the files located on the disk that is in the drive. Press the up arrow until the display reads File 2, JM Digisynth. Press the Enter Yes button to confirm the selection of File 2, JM, Digisynth. The display will read Pick Instrument button. It is asking you to pick an instrument location to place the sound. Underneath the display, locate the Instrument 1 button and press it. This button is the first of eight instrument buttons that are located beneath the display. Any one of these eight buttons could have been selected at this time. We'll use Instrument 1 in this example. After selecting the Instrument 1 button, the file will begin to load. As this is happening, you'll notice the red LED above the Instrument 1 button will be flashing, and the display will read Loading JM Digisynth. This means that the sound is loading from the disk drive into the instrument location that you selected. Once loading has completed, the red LED will stop flashing and remain lit, and the display will read File Loaded. This means that the sound is loaded into Instrument 1. Press the Instrument 1 button again. You will now see the yellow LED light up, in addition to the red one. The yellow LED indicates that the corresponding instrument is selected and can now be played from the keyboard. In this next segment, you'll cover loading a bank of sounds. Instead of loading one sound at a time, you can load in different combinations of sounds and sequences. We call these banks. Press the load button. Now press the instrument button. Press the up arrow repeatedly. You should also notice that as you scroll through these file names, one file lights up an indicator light labeled bank in the upper left hand corner of the display. This indicates that the file listed is not an instrument, but rather a bank. A bank is a collection of instruments and sequencer data. It also remembers which disk the instrument or sequencer data came from. With the bank indicator light lit and the display reading File 1 Tutorial Bank, press the Enter Yes button. The ASR10 will begin to load instruments into various instrument locations. As each loads, notice again that the red light above the instrument button flashes as the instrument is loading, then remains lit once loaded. The instruments are loaded into the instrument locations exactly as they were when this bank was saved to disk. Note that a bank load deletes any instrument that may already be loaded into the internal memory. Keep in mind you can select various instruments in the ASR10 by pressing their corresponding instrument buttons even while loading other instruments. Again, notice that each time you select an instrument, the yellow LED above its instrument button lights up to indicate that it is selected for playing. Here we'll look at the mod wheel, pitch wheel, 
patch select buttons, and the polykey pressure keyboard. Now that the first bank is loaded in, press the instrument 6 button. This will select the sound OB8. The modulation wheel is the rightmost of the two wheels located at the left end of the keyboard. While playing a chord on the keyboard, move the modulation wheel to its full on position. Notice the addition of vibrato in the sound as the mod wheel was moved. In this case, the mod wheel is adding vibrato to the sound. Modulation means change. The mod wheel can be programmed to change the pitch, volume, tone, and the effects individually or all at the same time. The pitch bend wheel is another type of modulator. This is located just to the left of the mod wheel. With a cord held down on the keyboard, move the pitch bend wheel up and down. As its name implies, the pitch bend wheel changes the pitch either sharp when the wheel is moved up or flat when the wheel is moved down. Notice that unlike the mod wheel, the pitch bend wheel is spring loaded and will always return to its center position when released. Another type of modulator is pressure. Play a chord once again. This time, as you play the notes, apply pressure into the keyboard. Pressure, in this case, is in Sonic's exclusive poly key pressure another modulator at your command. Try this. Play two C notes at opposite ends of the keyboard. Press harder on the high note. Notice the difference in the sounds. Pressure is modulating the high note only. The other note remained constant. This allows for more expressive playing. Located above the pitch and mod wheels are the Insonic exclusive patch select buttons. Play and release a chord on the keyboard. Now hold down the left patch select button, then re-strike the same chord. Notice the difference? Patch select buttons are an insonic innovation that allow different layers in an instrument to be audible or muted when either or both patch select buttons are held down. This can provide tremendous opportunities to play more expressively by having various articulation, timbre shifts, or even completely different sounds available at the press of a button. Experiment with the patch select buttons by playing chords, again holding down the right patch select button, and then both patch select buttons. In this next exercise, we'll stack instruments, simply layering two instruments to play simultaneously. Press the instrument 5 button. This selects the instrument JM Clav. Play the keyboard. Double click the instrument 6 button. Double clicking involves pressing a button twice in quick succession. Stacking is accomplished by double-clicking instrument buttons and results in layering the double-clicked instruments on top of the previously selected instrument. You'll notice that as you do this, the yellow LED above the instrument 6 button begins flashing and the yellow LED above the instrument 5 button remains lit. You have just stacked OB8 with JM Clav. Play the keyboard. You're now hearing both JM Clav and OB8 at the same time. You can stack up to all eight instruments at a time. The primary instrument will always have its yellow LED lit. Experiment with the different combinations. Now before we move on, let's deselect the stacked instruments. To do this, just select the corresponding instrument buttons. In this next exercise, we'll change the effects. Select instrument number five, JM Clav. To change the effect that you're currently hearing, press the FX Select Bypass button located on the top right hand corner of the front panel. Repeatedly press the up arrow button. You are now scrolling through the 50 digital effects that the ASR-10 can produce by using the Insonic ESP chip. Now we're going to edit the effects using variations. Every effect in the ASR-10 has four variations, each of which can be thought of as an effect preset or a specific set of parameter values for that effect. Select the Instrument 1 button. This is JM Drums. We'll use JM Drums to listen to the various changes that occur when editing the effects. Press the FX Select Bypass button. Repeatedly press the up arrow button. Just like before, you are now scrolling through the 50 digital effects of the ASR-10. Continue pressing the up arrow button until the display reads FX equals ROM 18, large plate. This selects the large plate reverb as the effect that your current drum instrument will be played through. Press the edit button. Press the effects button. This effects button is located at the bottom left hand side of the front panel. The display will now read variation 1 ballad reverb. 
Press the up arrow button once. Play a note and notice the changes. The display reads Variation 2. Each of these is called an effect variation. Effect variations are quick ways of getting in the ballpark of a particular sound that you want out of the effect. Let's edit one. Press the down arrow until the display reads Variation 1. Press the right arrow once. The display will read Bus 1, Mix equals 28. Use the data entry slider to adjust the Bus 1 Mix parameter value. Strike various keys as you change the parameter value to get an idea of how this parameter affects the amount of reverb you hear. Take a few minutes and experiment with this. In section two, we'll cover audio tracks, sampling, deleting, multi-sampling, formatting a disk, naming a disk, saving instruments, reversing samples, and looping. Audio track is the method for getting audio input to the ASR-10 for sampling. It also allows you to use the built-in digital effects of the ASR-10 to process external signals. Plug a microphone with a quarter inch phono plug into the jack marked left audio input on the rear panel. Press the audio track A button. This button is one of a pair of buttons located between the instrument buttons and the sequencer transport buttons. The yellow LED above the button will light. This indicates that the audio track A is selected for editing. Press the audio track A button again. The red source monitor LED above the button will light. This indicates that the audio track is active or source monitor enabled and can be used to monitor incoming audio from the corresponding rear panel audio input. The left audio input corresponds to audio track A, and the right audio input corresponds to track B. Test your microphone. A simple one, two, three will do. Depending on the output level of your microphone, you will either hear the signal coming through the ASR-10, or no signal will be audible. If you hear no audio, flip the mic line switch on the rear panel of the ASR-10 up to the mic position. You should now be able to hear the signal. Check. Also, the left pair of signal peak input level indicators located to the right of the display will light when signal is present. Green indicates the signal is detected. Red indicates the signal has reached 6 dB below the point of overload. You should see these indicators light when you hear audio. However, it may still be a bit too loud or soft. To further adjust the volume, turn the input level trim control knob on the rear panel of the unit until the signal just begins to light the red signal peak indicator. You're now using an audio track. If you want to change the effect, press the Effect Select Bypass button. Repeatedly press the up arrow. Like before, you're now scrolling through the 50 digital effects that the ASR-10 can produce by using the Insonic ESP chip. The next step is sampling. First, let's make sure that you've turned off the effects so we can hear a dry signal. Continue pressing the down arrow button until the display reads FX equals off 31 voice 30K. With the microphone still connected, press the sample source select button. The display will read record source equals input dry left. This indicates that the sample will be recorded dry, both now and after you've taken the sample. The word left in the display indicates which audio input will be sampled. Since the microphone is plugged into the left audio input, there is no need to change this parameter. Press the Enter Yes button. The display reads Pick Sample Instrument. Press the Instrument 8 button. This is the Level Detect VU screen. As you speak into the microphone, notice Check. that there are lines that fill up the display. Check. This one, indicates two. the Check. signal level. If you one, speak two. loudly, you will see the amp indicator light appear in the upper right of the display. This lets you know that the signal has reached a point where distortion will occur in the sample. The optimum level for sampling is the point just beneath where the amp indicator light is triggered. The asterisk in the display represents the sample threshold level. This is the level that the incoming audio signal must reach to trigger sampling after sampling is initiated. Press the Enter Yes button to begin sampling. The display reads waiting with a certain number of seconds left. This indicates the total amount of available sample time remaining. This will vary depending on the amount of memory in your ASR-10. Clearly say the word one into the microphone. One. 
The display switches to recording and the time begins to count down. Press the cancel no button. This stops sampling and the display will flash play root key. Play one. middle C. You will now one. hear your voice saying one. one. Middle one. C is now the root key for this one. sample. That is the note at which the sample will play back at its original pitch. If you play keys above middle C, you'll notice the pitch of your voice getting higher. Below middle C, your voice will sound lower in pitch. Let's do another one. Let's delete this instrument and try it again. To delete, hold down the instrument button that you want to delete, in this case number 8, and then press no. Before you move on to the next step, repeat the sampling procedures we just discussed until you're comfortable with them. The next step is to multi-sample across the keyboard. Make sure instrument 8 is deleted. Now press the sample source select button. The display will come up to the record source page. You're going to take another sample from the left audio input. Press the enter yes button to confirm this. The display will read pick sample instrument. Press instrument 8. Press yes again to start sampling. Say the word 1 then one. press no to stop sampling. Play a root key, middle C. One. Now you're going to add another sample one. in addition to the one that is already there. Press the sample source select button again. Press the same instrument button. The display reads unnamed layer equals one, WS equals new. This is called the multi-sampling display. This only appears when there has been at least one sample previously recorded within the instrument. Press the enter yes button. The level detect VU screen will appear. Press the enter yes button again. The display reads waiting with a certain number of seconds left. Again, the number will vary depending on the length of your initial sample. Clearly speak two into the microphone. Two. The display switches to recording and the time begins to count down. Press the cancel no button. This stops sampling and the display will flash play root key. Play an octave above middle C. You will now hear your voice two, saying two. Two, two. Middle one, C one, and the surrounding two, keys two. are playing the first sample. An octave higher, you can hear the sample two. The split point is halfway between the two root one, keys. One, one, one. Two, Let's two, do another two, one. Two, two. Press the sample source select button again. The display will come up on the record source page. Press the same button, instrument eight. The display once again reads, unnamed, layer equals one, wave sample equals new. We're going to take a new sample in addition to the two samples that currently reside in instrument 8. Press the enter yes button. Press the enter yes button again to initiate sampling. The display reads waiting with a certain number of seconds left. Clearly speak 3 into the microphone. Three. Press the cancel no button. This stops sampling and the display will flash play root key. Play an octave below middle C. Three. You'll now hear three. your voice saying One. 3. Two. Three, now you can hear one, all three two, of your samples three, playing across one, the keyboard. Two, three, it is possible to have 127 one, samples playing two, across three, the keyboard at once. One, two, three, For example, press JM drums. Notice the many different samples across the keyboard. Now let's save your work. But first you have to format and name a disk to save it to. Eject the disk that is currently in the drive by pressing the disk ejector button located at the front of the disk drive. Insert a blank high density or double density diskette into the drive. Press the command button. Press the system MIDI button. Repeatedly press the right arrow until the display reads format floppy disk. Press the enter yes button. The display reads disk label equals 000. This parameter allows you to give the diskette a disk label. A disk label is a unique four letter and three number name that identifies the disk. Press the up arrow or use the data entry slider to change the first character of the disk label to T. Press the right arrow button once. Notice that the cursor has moved under the eye. When editing a name, the left and right arrow buttons select which character can be edited, and the up and down arrow buttons or the data entry slider are used to edit the character. Continue naming this disk Test001. Press the enter yes button to confirm the name. The display will read format type equals in Sonic. Press the enter yes button again. The display asks erase and format disk. Press the enter yes button. The display flashes formatting while this command is being executed. This should take approximately one to two minutes. 
When finished, the ASR10 will briefly read disk command completed and then revert to format floppy disk. Eject the disk and write the new disk label name on it. Now you'll know the disk label name for each disk without having to insert it into the ASR10. This is very important because the ASR10 will ask for a disk by name when you load a bank. Now that the disk is ready, you want to save your work. Press the Instrument 8 button. The yellow selected LED will come on. Press the Command button. Press the Instrument button. Repeatedly press the right arrow until the display reads Save Instrument. Press the Enter Yes button. Now we're going to name your instrument. Using the right and left arrows, you can select a character to change. Using the up and down arrow, you can pick the desired letters to name your sound. Name your sound 1, 2, 3. Pulling the data slider to the bottom will give you a blank space. Now press the Enter Yes button. The display will flash, saving 1, 2, 3, while this command is being executed. When finished, the ASR10 display will briefly read, Disk Command Completed, then revert to Save Instrument. The disk now contains an instrument file named 123. To verify this, let's reload the instrument. Press the load button, press the instrument button. The display reads file 123. Press the enter yes button. The display reads pick instrument button. Press the instrument 7 button. The display reads loading 123 while the loading command is taking place. When finished, the display will show file loaded. You have now completed saving an instrument to disk and reloading it back into the SR10. Now you've discovered how easy it is to sample on the SR10, let's loop a sound. Looping is a way to conserve memory. On the ASR10, it's very easy to do. Press the sample source select button. The display will come up on the record source page. Press the enter yes button. The display will read pick sample instrument. Press the Instrument 8 button. The Level Detect VU screen will appear. Press the Enter Yes button. The display reads waiting with a certain number of seconds left. Clearly count from 1 to 10 one, into the microphone. Two, three, the display four, switches five, to recording six, and the time begins seven, to count down. Eight, nine, ten. Press the Cancel No button when finished. This stops sampling and the display will read Play Root Key. Play middle C. You'll now one, hear your voice counting two, from 1 to 10. Three, four, the display will five, always default six, to mode seven, equals forward no loop eight, after taking nine, a sample. Ten. For future reference, notice at the top of the display the icons tell you you're on the edit wave page. Now to play the sound backwards, all you have to do is press the up arrow once. Press the up arrow again and now the display reads mode equals loop forward. If you hold a key down for a while, One, you'll hear the two, sound repeating three, over and over again. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have One, turned the loop on. Two, three, Press the right four, arrow once. Five, the display reads sample start equals some value. This is the page that we remove empty space at the beginning of the sample. Using the right arrow, move the cursor underneath the number in parentheses. This is called the sample start percentage. Using the data entry slider, set this value to 20. Now play a key. Three, four, five, Notice that the six, sound now three, starts around 3. Four, you have five, moved the starting six. point 20% into the sample. Set this back to 0. Press the right arrow repeatedly until the display reads loop start equals some value. Underline the number in parentheses. While holding a key down, One. Press the up two, arrow repeatedly three, until you hear the numbers four, 4 through 10 looping. Five, six, At the seven, speed I counted, eight, the value nine, you're looking ten, for will be around 30%. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, now nine, press the right arrow ten. again. This brings us to the loop end page. Underline the number in parentheses. While holding the key down, press One, the down arrow repeatedly two, until three, you hear the numbers 4, four through 6 repeating. Five, Six, Remember, seven, hold the key down eight, while doing this. Four, five, the value six, you're looking for seven, will be four, around 60. Five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six, four, 
five, six, four. Now so far you've made it through the performance and sampling sections. The next step is sequencing. Let's review the topics that will be covered in this next section. This will include loading sequences and songs, creating sequences, recording, overdubbing and quantizing tracks, editing song steps, saving song sequences and banks. Eject your new disk, test 001, and reinsert the disk in Sonic ASR10 operating system. Press the load button. Press the sequence song button. This button is located directly below the instrument button. The display reads file 9 tutorial sequence. Press the enter yes button. The file will begin to load. Once loading has completed, the display will read disk command completed. Press the play button. This button is on the bottom right hand side of the front panel. When it reaches the end, the sequence will loop back around and play again from the beginning. It will continue doing this until you press the stop continue button located immediately to the left of the play button. Press the stop continue button. The sequence will stop playing. You have now loaded the sequence from disk and played it on your ASR10. In this next segment, you're going to load a song. A song is a collection of sequences. Press the load button. Now press the sequence song button. Press the up arrow until the display reads file 10 tutorial song. You should also notice that as you scroll to the new file name, the indicator light labeled song lights up in the left hand corner of the display. This indicates that the file listed is not just a sequence, but rather a song. A song is a collection of sequences arranged in a particular order. With the song indicator lit and the display reading file 10 tutorial song, press the enter yes button. The ASR10 will load the song file, which includes the sequences in the song. While it's performing this task, the display will flash loading tutorial song. When finished, the display will read file loaded. Press the play button. Remember that a song will overwrite any sequences that are in the ASR10 at the time the song is loaded. In other words, make certain that any sequences you might want to keep are saved to disk somewhere before loading in a song. Now press the stop continue button. The song will stop playing. Now that you've loaded and played some sequences and songs from disk, it's time to create a sequence of your own from scratch. Press the command button. Press the sequence song button. The display reads create new sequence. Press the enter yes button. Now the display reads new name equals some value. This parameter allows you to give a name to the sequence you're about to create. As with the other naming parameters, the left and right arrow buttons select which character can be edited, and the up and down arrows, or the data entry slider, are used to edit the character. Name this sequence, My Sequence. Now press the Enter Yes button. The display now shows the time signature parameter. This parameter will determine the time signature for the sequence that is about to be created. For the purpose of this tutorial, 4-4 will be fine. However, there are 593 other time signatures that you can write in. Now press the Enter Yes button. This confirms the numerator in the 4-4 time signature. Press the Enter Yes button again. This confirms the denominator. This also initiates the process of creating a new sequence. When finished, the ASR10 display will briefly read Command Completed, then revert to Create New Sequence. You have just created a sequence location in the ASR10. It is now ready to have your song recorded into it. Press the Drum Track 1 button. This selects Track 1 for recording. In the sequencer, the instrument buttons act as tracks, so that's how we will refer to them in the rest of this video. While holding down the record button, press the play button. This turns on the sequencer click. You should hear a distinctly different click every fourth beat. This is beat one. 
The ASR-10 will now begin recording as soon as you play a key. Beginning on the first beat of a measure, play your first part. Play something simple like this. Now press the stop button when you're finished. The display reads four, five, or six bars. Keep track. It's asking, do you want to keep the first track? The ASR-10 is giving you the option to keep the track that you've recorded. But first you want to press the play button to hear it. So press the play button. Press the stop button. Now if you want to keep it, press the enter yes button. If you don't, press the cancel no button and repeat the process. You'll briefly see editing on the display. Then you'll be returned to the Sequence Select Go To page. You've just recorded a track into the ASR10 sequencer. When sequencing on the ASR10, you may find that you want to record over a part that is currently there and replace it with a new part. It's very simple to do. While holding down the record button, press the play button. The sequencer will give you a four beat count off. When it reaches the beginning of bar one, it will begin recording thereby erasing the material that was on the track previously. It will be replaced by whatever you played during the recording. Again, play something easy until you get the hang of it. Now when finished, the display will read, Keep Old or New. This is the audition page. This is an exclusive and sonic feature that allows you to audition your new tracks Using the arrows, the ASR-10 allows you to compare the old track and the new track. Press the play button and listen to the newly recorded track. Now press the left arrow button. The cursor moves beneath the word old on the display. And now you're listening to the original track. Press the right arrow button once. The cursor moves back beneath the word new on the display. And you're again listening to the newly created track. Now to keep the new track, press the Enter Yes button. You'll briefly see editing on the display. By pressing the Enter Yes button while the new track was underlined, you have chosen to keep your newly created part. Okay, you have a kick and snare drum recorded. Let's record a bass part. Press the Track 5 button. While holding down the Record button, press the Play button. The sequencer will give you a 4 beat count on. When it reaches the beginning of bar one, it will begin recording. You'll hear the previously recorded drum track. Now record your bass part until you see the audition page. Now press the play button to audition your new track. To keep it, press the enter yes button. You'll briefly see editing on the display. Now once you get the flow of the sequencer, you can continue to build as many tracks as you like. Now that you've got a couple tracks recorded, let's do some editing. You can quantize a track to tighten up any timing inconsistencies that might exist. Press track 1, the drum track. Now press the command button. Press the track button. The display will read quantize track. Press the enter yes button. The display reads track 1. Confirm this by pressing the enter yes button. The display now reads, quantize to quarter notes. This is where you determine the quantizing value. The selections range from quarter notes to 64th note triplets. Press the up arrow button twice. The display will now read, quantize to eighth notes. This is what we're going to quantize to. Press the enter yes button. Now the display reads, range equals entire track. This is where you determine what range of the track will be quantized. For now, let's do the entire track. Press the Enter Yes button to confirm this. You'll briefly see editing on the display followed by the audition page. Now press the Play button to listen to the newly quantized version. Press the Enter Yes button to keep it. Again, you'll see editing on the display. Then you'll be returned to the Sequence Select Go To page. Now let's say you want to add some symbols to the drum track. This is called overdubbing. We also call this add mode. 
Press the edit button. Now press the sequence song button. Press the right arrow repeatedly until you see the display that reads sequence record mode equals replace. Press the up arrow button once. The display now reads sequence record mode equals add. This allows additional material to be recorded onto a track. Now when you start recording, the sequencer will again give you a four beat count off. This time it will add your newly played part to the material that is already on this track. Make sure drum track one is selected. You'll hear the kick and snare as you record the hi-hat. Hold record and press play to start your sequence. Now record your hi-hat part until you see the audition page. Press play to audition your new track or press the enter yes button to keep it. The next step is to chain sequences together to create a song. Press the command button. Press the sequence song button. Press the left arrow button until the display reads edit song steps. Now press the enter yes button. This page allows you to arrange the order that the sequences will play in. The cursor is beneath the number one in the step field. Press the up arrow button. Press it again. The number in the step field increases to two then three. You'll also notice that the sequence name field changes from intro to verse then finally chorus. These are the names of the sequences in the order that they are currently playing in the tutorial song. Press the left arrow button once. The cursor moves back to the sequence name field. You can now select a sequence to insert before the chorus. How about your new sequence, which is named My Sequence? Repeatedly press the up arrow button until you see My Sequence in the sequence name field. Press the enter yes button to insert the new step three. The display will now read INS Chorus 0401. This indicates that a third step has been inserted and that the chorus is now step four. In order to see the step that you've just inserted, press the down arrow button once. You'll see INS My Sequence 0301 in the display. You can now be assured that your song step edit is in place. Press the Cancel No button. This takes you out of the Edit Song Steps function. Now press the play button and you can listen to your song. Next you'll probably want to save this new song. Eject the disk in Sonic ASR10 operating system and reinsert the disk test 001. Press the command button. Press the sequence song button. Repeatedly press the right arrow button until the display reads Save Song plus All Sequences. Press the Enter Yes button. The display now reads New Name equals Some Value. This parameter allows you to rename this version of the song prior to saving it to disk. Using the methodology we described earlier, edit the new name to Tutorial plus Me. Now press the Enter Yes button. When finished, the ASR10 display will briefly read Disk Command Completed, then revert to Save Song Plus All Sequences. The disk now contains a song file named Tutorial Plus Me. To verify this, let's reload the song. Press the Load button. Press the Sequence Song button. The display reads File 2 Tutorial Plus Me. Press the Enter Yes button to load this song. The display reads loading tutorial plus me while this command is taking place. When finished, the display will show file loaded. You have now completed saving a song to disk. Now that you've made your own instrument, recorded your own sequence, and edited the song steps of an existing song to make your own, you can now save all of this information in a bank. As discussed earlier, a bank is a collection of instruments and can also contain sequencer data. Press the command button. Press the instrument button. Repeatedly press the right arrow until the display reads Save Bank. Press the Enter Yes button. The display now reads Bank Name equals Some Value. This parameter allows you to name the bank. Name the bank to My First Bank. Now press the Enter Yes button. The display will flash Saving My First Bank while this command is being executed. 
When finished, the ASR10 display will briefly read, disk command completed, then revert to save bank. The disk now contains a bank file named My First Bank. We can now delete all the contents of memory and reload it. Now let's check the work. Press the load button. Press the instrument button. The display reads File 3 My First Bank. Press the Enter Yes button. The ASR10 will now load 123 into Instrument 7. Then it will load the song file Tutorial Plus Me. After these files have been loaded, the display will ask for the OS disk you were using. This is a prompt that the ASR10 issues when it needs to load instruments or song files from a disk other than the one currently in the drive. Eject the disk, test 001, and reinsert the disk in Sonic ASR10 operating system. Press the Enter Yes button. The ASR10 will load the additional instruments that were used in the Tutorial Plus Me bank. When the remaining instruments have all loaded in, the display will read, Bank load completed. Press the play button. Notice that you're now hearing your song, Tutorial Plus Me, playing back exactly as you saved it. You now know all the major features of the ASR10. You should feel more comfortable getting around the keyboard. We encourage you to explore it in more detail. Now as we mentioned earlier, we'd like to give you a t-shirt. Sample your name, address, city, state, zip, and phone number into the ASR10. Save it to disk. If you would like, use it in a sequence. We're looking for creativity and fun. Send your disk and shirt size to Insonic Corp. 155 Great Valley Parkway, Melvern, PA, 19355. Attention Training Department. We hope you enjoy your ASR 10. Thanks for listening.